Hey, hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Agar Pajapati and in this video, we'll be talking about how to pull data from REST API using pagination in Azure Data Factory. So in the previous video, we have talked about what is API and how to pull data from API or the basic one in the previous video. And in this video, we'll be seeing some advanced topic like, you know, what is pagination and how to, how to retrieve data from the API using pagination and and some extra things also we will be seeing so uh, before the video i would like to introduce my channel geek coders here i upload videos on azure data factory sql python azure databricks and so on so if you're liking my content you can subscribe to my channel and share with your friends so that everyone will get benefited so let's get started for today's video so uh, for that i have written some points in my notepad so pagination rules are defined as a directionary in data set which contains one or more case sensitive key value pairs. The configuration will be used to generate the request starting from the second page. Okay. The connector will stop iterate, uh, iterating when it gets HTTP status 204, no content or any of the JSON path expression in page initial rule returns null. So what does it mean is that, is that, see, in th this, this is our API. Uh, let me remove this ditto. Now this is our uh, this is our response, right? So if you can see here, we have this next and previous uh, parameter. So this next parameter define define that you know uh, uh, define the pagination concept. So if we like, if if you can see, this is the URL, okay? So it is throwing a URL. So if I try to copy this and put it over here. then it will go into the second page you can see this offset is 20 and uh, limit is 20 right see now we have data starting from 21 to 20, uh, 20 40 right so if like if i copy this again the next url and uh, okay just copy this thing and if i paste it over here then you can you can see now we will receive the data from 41 till 60 because here the limit is uh, 20 okay so this is the thing you know how pagination works now the same thing we have to do in the adf so uh, what we can do okay so for that you know we need a link service so first we create a link service so just click on it and write rest click on it everything would be same the base url would be the base url would be remove this copy this paste it over here that's cool authentication type would be anonymous for now since we do not have any uh, key and password type of thing it is open click on create button oh, okay cool now we will go to data set here we will create a new data set search again rest api then continue use a link service cool fine right now we will go to pipeline create a new pipeline go to copy active data copy data activity and here if you can see this these all the general terms like i have told you in the previous video you can watch those video and now in the source we have to you know uh, choose a data set source data set so i have we have chosen and here if you can see this paginations rule is given this option is given and you can see uh, if i click on this name we have none absolute okay let me increase the pin yeah we have this none absolute url query parameters headers and condition max request number and this as rfc 598 right these many values we have it in our copy data activity in the api in the rest, rest api uh, link service so we'll go back to our notepad and this absolute url means indicate the url to issue the next request okay 
it can be either absolute URL or relative URL. So what does it mean? So it is saying absolute URL would would indicate the next request. Okay, so the next request is coming in this next parameter. Right, so we have to pass this next attribute over here. Now this query parameter uh, or query parameter like this is user defined. We can define it, which references one query parameter. Suppose, you know, suppose here uh, some query is given like uh, limit is equal to ended. So we have to pass these kind of things. So we can pass it with the help of query parameter. Headers. Request header is user defined, which reference one header name in the next HTTP request. So the same thing we can do with the help of this header option. The same thing we can define. End condition is also user defined, which indicate the condition that will end the pagination loop. So like there is some condition, you know, so we can define that condition so that, you know, it will end the loop whenever that condition matches. Now this max request number is indicate the maximum pagination request number leave it as empty means no limit so uh, 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 you know oh let's say uh, let's say you know i mean uh, we have this max request number let's say two so it will iterate the loop i the i mean it, it will hit the url two times now the support support rfc this by default this is set to true if no pagination rule is defined you can disable this by rule by setting the rule is false or remove this so in this video we will be seeing max request number and absolute url thing so we can remove this since we do not need it now click it again choose absolute url so before you do that let me do a PV, PV review. Okay, it is getting failed. What is the issue? Okay, cool. That's not a problem. Delete it. Now click on preview data. Yeah, you can see here we have this JSON and here we have this next. So this is the root one and inside that we need this next column or next, next attribute. So what we can do, click on this new button absolute url click body and here write dot 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 i mean dollar dot next simple okay go to sync since we do not have any so we will create a azure blob json format here we will choose the second one and here let me write my container name and here the file would the file name would be uh, pagination.json oh click on ok yeah cool right now if i click on this debug button and okay let me refresh it it is also getting refreshed pagination.json file has been created you can see this 1016 today's date and if i click on it and if i click on this edit button here you can see this is this goes till 20 so the first page only came right the first page only came cool it means there is some issue so let me go back again dollar dot next right that's fine only let me debug it again
yeah now you can see we have uh, we have all the records so if i if i go down now you can see the last record would be of 1000 something or 10000 see this or this maybe okay so uh, what what happens like it automatically takes uh, that value and it goes until the value would be null okay now i do not want uh, i do not want multiple attributes over there you know i want a desired column so what can i do is that i can remove these many because this is this is not required this is not required and here I remove this and here also use the same uh this right fine now i will debug it you can see we have only result uh, result json result column now what we want is that i want to change the name let's say result output so you can define like this also okay result only came let me check it again result output it is fine right hmm now let me debug it again we'll see more about this suppose sometimes we want to we want to or we need to add some extra columns right let's say i want to add a time a date time thing or data factory name or something like that so how we can do that so you can see this additional columns so click on this choose here add dynamic content go to function right you just let's see i let, let's say i want to uh, you know i want to uh, uh, write down the read time so read underscore time and uh, sync is also done fine if i click on uh, here like now go to mapping and click on new mapping here okay here write dollar the same thing the same name you have to write a read underscore time and here you have to pass here you have to pass the same thing so you can see here this comes additional and here also you can pass the same right now debug it you can also see here result underscore output came right so what we what we done before so now let me refresh this I hope this will also work and if I refresh it again then you can see at the last of each each array there would be read underscore time attribute okay which defines the read time I mean at at what time this data has been read so okay that is also fine now go back here and we'll see what this uh, max request number will do so if you have seen this you know the metadata of this it is showing this count 1154 and the limit is 20 okay the limit is 20 and it is the count is 1154 so if we if we divide 1154 
so it it comes around you know uh, how much thousand ten ten twenty hundred not hundred somewhat okay so you know okay let me uh, open a new here let's say uh, there is one API okay and uh, uh, in first call in first call will receive 20 different records when we hit second time will receive we will we'll receive 20 20 different records likewise in on third call will receive 20 different records okay so in this case what we can do you know what we can do we can use this method max request number so if we know like there is around 40 pages every every time you know we need to pull only 40 pages or 10 pages or some set of pages then we can define here some number let's say i am writing only three let's say i am writing here only three and let me just debug it now since our api api is designed you know the api will work whenever we pass only uh, on whenever we pass the next url i mean if we pass this url then only it will return a new set of rows okay so here if you can if i if i if i refresh it then you can see we will have only three rows i mean i mean it it called three times and the data also would be same okay data also would be same since it is not uh, made made uh, for that for 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 this uh, thing so i just told you the concept suppose you are working on some api where you know where and in each call you will receive a, a a next page automatically you do not you do not need to pass some parameters and all those things there you can use this max request number and uh, this is the concept of pagination how can we you know just read and write the data into some layer or using this rest api thing using get method and the pagination method so i hope you have understood this concept and in this in in next video i will be talking about more more about you know how to pass the json and what is post method how can we use post method in api in adf so i hope you have understood this concept and if you do if you do do subscribe and share with your friends thank you